Well, good morning, SCF kids. I'm so glad that you chose to join me again today. In just a few minutes, we're gonna begin with a really fun game that you might even wanna try at home later with a brother or a sister or maybe even a mom and dad. A little bit later in our episode, we're gonna watch a Bible story video, we're gonna sing some worship songs together, and we're gonna hear about how Jesus healed yet another person. But this time, it wasn't because he couldn't walk. This man couldn't see. He was blind. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. All right, kids, it's game time. And I have my friend Noah and my friend Jovi here with me today. And they are clearly blindfolded, which means they cannot see anything I'm doing right now. And I am holding up how many fingers? Lucky guess, Noah. Lucky guess. Was it seven? Uh, it was. No. <laughs> I'm uh, he cannot see, I promise you. But here's how our game is going to work. I am going to give each one of these um, fine volunteers an object at the same time. And they, as soon as they know what it is, they're going to tell me what they think it is. Okay. Understand? Yeah. Cool. All right. Object number one. Can you do this? Like this? Hands are sweaty already. Ah. Bowling pin. Oh, Noah. Like All right. Uh, <laughs> round number two. <laughs> I think he's played this game before. He's guessed how many fingers I was holding up and got number one. All right, here we go now. Lollipop. Oh, oh it's tie. One for one. Uh, uh, you can keep those after, yes. All right. Kids at home, you see what that is? And go. Oh, Jovi, where are you at? Oh, yeah, you can wear those if you want. Uh, all right, next object. Oh. Baby bottle. <laughs> it took a little bit longer, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I got two more. Ooh, just about dropped that one. I got two more. It would have been bad, yes. Oh, that's hefty. Hammer? <laughs> oh, Joey. I'm a tactile person, I guess. <laughs> okay, Joby, you got this one, all right? This is the last one. Tape. Joby, I, I wasn't keeping track. I think Noah won, though. I think I Noah definitely had it's at least cool. one more than you. But uh, thank you, thank you. You can take your blindfolds off if oh. you'd like. Or you can leave them on, whatever you choose. But uh, today in our Bible story, there's a man who also couldn't see because he was blind. In fact, he was blind his entire life. He'd never seen a butterfly. He'd never seen a sunset or a rainbow, nothing. He was blind, but Jesus comes in and changes his life forever. Check this out. Jesus was walking with his disciples when he saw a man who had been born blind. The disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Did this happen because of his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, Neither his sin nor his parents' sin caused this. This man was born blind so that people could see God's power through him. Jesus would be on earth for a short time, so he healed people to show what God is like. Jesus said, While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud. He put the mud on the eyes of the man who was blind. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus instructed. The man went and washed. Wow. When he came back, he could see. The man's neighbors were amazed. They took the man to the religious leaders and they asked him how he was healed. A man put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I can see, he said. 
The religious leaders were upset because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath again. They did not want to believe that Jesus could give sight to people who were blind. Over and over again, the man who was healed told the religious leaders what happened. The man believed Jesus must have come from God. But the religious leaders threw the man out of the synagogue. Jesus came to the man again and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is so I can believe in him. You have already seen him, Jesus replied. The Son of Man is talking to you now. The man said, I believe, Lord. And he worshipped Jesus. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight, true understanding of God and his kingdom. Those who trust in Jesus see who he is and worship him. This story gives us some wonderful news about pain, sickness, and brokenness of our world. It's fairly common to think that if something sad or difficult happens to you, it's because God is punishing you. This story helps us see that sad or difficult circumstances, they're not God's punishment, but ways that God can show his glory. The world is broken by sin. That means that we all face sad or difficult situations sometimes. Our actions have consequences too. So there are times when our sinful choices cause pain and suffering to us and those around us. Jesus' disciples thought that the man born blind must have either had wicked parents or perhaps he was wicked himself. But this blindness was not punishment. It was God's way of showing his power and glory to the world. So can you guys relate to the blind man in our story? Has there ever been a time when you felt lonely during a difficult situation? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Damien from San Anselmo, California asks, What should I do if God seems far away during hard times? Great question, and I think we all experience that at times, where we're going through a season of life and, and God just seems really distant. Usually that is when we're going through something difficult, some adversity or uh, just a, a situation where we just find ourselves being sad a lot or, or troubled. And, and it feels like God is distant. Now notice the word I just said there, it feels that way. So here's the first thing we have to remember, that God is never distant. He is always there with us. God is omnipresent. That's the big word for present everywhere at once. And so he's always with us. And if we've trusted in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit within us. So he's very present with us in that regard. So even if God feels distant, here's the one thing we can do. We can speak God's truth into our minds and our hearts and remind ourselves that he has not gone anywhere. He is right there with us. And that's good news. The other thing is this, that God feels distant at times, not because he has pulled away from us, but sometimes we've taken our eyes off of him. And so in my life, I know the times that God feels distant, it's because I've not been spending time reading the Bible as much. Uh, I've not been praying as much. Uh, maybe I've not been worshiping God as much. And so one of the things I can do and I need to do when God feels distant is I need to draw back toward him. I need to, to read more of scripture. I need to, to worship more and pray more. And the amazing thing happens every time when I start doing that, God no longer feels distant. He, he feels, like he's right there where he's always been. And so I want to encourage you to do that. When he feels distant, know he's not distant. And what can you do to draw back to him and you do those things? So got a question back for you. How can you encourage someone who feels alone or has lost hope? All right, kids, it's memory verse time. So seeing as we're talking about a blind man in our story, I will be blindfolded. I'm gonna give myself 10 seconds to see how many of these paper clips I can pull out of this rice. However many I get each round is how many words I'm gonna take out of the verse. Easy? All right, here we go. 
I'm gonna take those off. Okay, are you ready? Round number one. Oh, I have to hit the timer. 10 seconds. Oh, this is harder than it looks, guys. Phew. All right, so I got two. Two words coming out of the verse. Read it with me. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, four to five. Okay, round number two. Timer, go. Cheer me on, guys, cheer me on. Uh-oh, I know. Oh, I had that one in my hand, had it in my hand. All right, that time I got four. So another four words coming out of our verse. Read it with me. Surely he bore, sorry, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. Okay, round number three. I don't even know if there's any left in here. Oh, there's one, two, uh, three, I think. Maybe that was rice. Oh no, three, got three that time. All right, one last time, we're gonna take out three more words from our verse and see if you can read it with me. In three, two, one. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Not too bad, guys. You did a great job reading it with all those words missing. It's a big verse, so great job. Keep practicing it. But for now, I want you to go grab your Bibles and meet me back here. Everyone's got their Bibles up. Now let's open them to Psalm chapter 146, and we're going to read verses 8 and 9 together. It says, The Lord sets prisoners free and gives sight to the blind. He lifts those who have fallen. He loves his righteous people. He protects the strangers who live in our land. He helps widows and orphans, but takes the wicked to ruins. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight, true understanding of God and his kingdom. Those who trust in Jesus see who he is and worship him. So would you worship along with me right now? Would you get up on your feet? Let's sing together.
Dorf at your service. It's a hard name, I, I know. Just say it slow. Du soll Dorf. Aha, yes, you've got it. Eye diagram, please. <laughs> now, you see, the human eye has many parts. It has the pupa, the lens, the retina, and the optic nerve. It's also very important. The human eye has many layers and even fluids. It's about the size of a ball. You know, one of those uh, uh, pinging, ponging balls. 
A ping pong ball, yes. It's about the size of a ping pong ball. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. It can see almost 10 million different shades of color. What did you say? You want to know what blindness is? Well, of course. Blindness is when your eyes don't work. That's it. It's when they don't work. Oh, where would you look at the time? Mrs. Dr. Dusseldorf must be leaving. I have yet another class. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Wow, Dr. Dusseldorf was super helpful. She helped us understand a little bit more about the human eye and gave us a good understanding about what it means to be blind. The man in our story today, he was born blind, but Jesus healed him. He had physical blindness, but all of us have spiritual blindness. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight, true understanding of God and his kingdom. Those who trust in Jesus see who he is and worship him. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can gain spiritual sight by faith in your son. Help us see the truth of the gospel and have courage to tell others about you. Open the eyes of those we interact with so they can see you and have a relationship with you through Jesus. Amen.